The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Boatest.com, and today we're going to take a look at NMMA boat and yacht certification programs, which inspect new boat models to make sure they comply with the American Boat and Yacht Council standards. Today, 85% of boats sold in the U.S. are certified by the NMMA to meet ABYC standards. So what are those standards and why are they so important? To begin with, NMMA inspectors look over 300 separate items plus verified testing that the builders are required to do. We can't look into all 300 items, but we can give you a good idea of what is covered. Let's start with the visibility from the helm of a large boat. Visibility from the helm from both seated and standing positions have strict ABYC standards. There must be clear unobstructed horizontal vision from the seated position from 27 inches off the seat to 33 inches above the seat. In a standing position, there must be clear horizontal visibility from a low eye position of 58 inches off the deck to a high eye position of 68 inches off the deck. Now let's go to the engine room. When a boat has its wiring, plumbing, and systems partially installed in an engine room, it's a good time for the NMMA inspectors to start their work. Unregulated or unprotected electricity can cause fires and explosions, and that's why NMMA inspectors spend a lot of time in this area. Also, historically, the weakest point of any boat or yacht has been its electrical system. To make sure there's required overcurrent protection, NMMA inspectors check breakers, and fuse blocks to make sure they're prescribed distances from the power source and that wires are properly loomed and continuously energized components are booted. The looms that carry energized wires must be tied up every 18 inches to meet ABYC standards and here the builder improves that spec to every 11 inches. NMMA inspectors check electrical cables to make sure they meet the standards. On the outer sheathing, the cable must have the gauge, the temperatures dry and wet, and the voltage Inspectors even check negative bus bars such as this one to make sure there are not more than four terminals per connection. Chafe on electrical wires is one thing that can lead to trouble and that's why NMMA inspectors make sure that all wires going through bulkheads of any kind be protected with anti-chafe material. The electrical panel we saw earlier has now been installed in the bulkhead of an engine room. All wiring on board must meet ABYC standards, not just the boat's DC system. This AC junction box has tabs that hold the wiring in place to reduce pull on the connection point. Friction connectors on the back of electrical panels must pass a six pound pull test. Electrical outlets near a location that can be wet, including a galley or a head, and of course on deck, must have a ground fault circuit interrupt protection. When the circuit trips, just press the little red button when all is well. Gasoline fuel systems in boats must be carefully built and ABYC has a set of strict standards to make storing fuel and using it safe. Fuel fill enters the top of all fuel tanks and ABYC requires two stainless steel hose clamps a quarter inch away from the end of the hose that aren't overlapping each other. The fuel vent only requires one hose clamp. All fuel fills must be accessible as this one is in a cutaway in the engine room. The ABYC requires that all fuel hoses taking fuel from the tank to the engine's meat specs and be labeled as such. This hose proudly proclaims that it meets standards from the Society of Automotive Engineers, the U.S. Coast Guard, the International Standardization Organization, and European Conformity Standards. A label on the side of the tank attests that the fuel tank has been inspected to meet ABYC standards. All boats must have their fuel system pressure tested to a level of at least 3 psi or one and a half times the maximum hydrostatic pressure it will see in service, whichever is greater. But proper installation is just as important. Metallic fuel tanks installed with brackets or other retaining supports must have the non-abrasive, non-absorbent cushioning material permanently affixed to the tank to prevent condensation or bilge water from corroding the tank. Note how this tank is strapped in place with a protective neoprene base attached to the tank. All non-integral fuel tanks and their components that will be within the engine room must be certified to withstand a fire test for two and a half minutes and then pass a pressure test. Another inspection point on the NMMA checklist are all of the through-hull fittings. First, through-hull seacocks and ball valves must be readily accessible. This one is and an operator can easily reach down and can throw the handle. Seacocks must be able to withstand a 500 pound side force for 30 seconds to pass inspection. This test for side strength is done outside the boat on panels. ABYC standards require that all exhaust hoses for both engines and generators be double clamped with half inch clamps minimum. Here we see engine exhaust risers double hose clamped to the exhaust tube. The NMMA inspector validates that has been done, 
not only at the through holes, but also where the exhaust goes into and out of the muffler. Generator exhaust is always carefully inspected as tight turns in the hose can lead to heat buildup. ABYC standards require one blower per engine and the blower intake in the lower one-third of the compartment. Carbon monoxide detectors are required in enclosed space in the main area and away from an opening port light, opening window, or hatch because clearly that will contaminate readings. An important ABYC standard is that all power boats must have a means of unassisted reboarding by a person in the water. If it's a ladder, it must extend at least 22 inches below the waterline. Its steps can't exceed 12 inches apart and each rung must be equidistant and they can't be closer than 5 inches adjacent to a solid surface. It also must be as far away from the propellers as possible. All boats rock and roll, which is why ABYC standards require that all exterior seats must have grab handles within easy reach. Typically, they're found beside a seat, as this one is. On this extended settee, the best place to put a handhold is on the seat face so passengers can hang on when need be. Even standing positions on boats, such as on center consoles, must have handholds dedicated to those positions. This handhold on the other side of a T-top meets those requirements. In companionways and stairways, ABYC standards require handholds for entering and exiting. Boats equipped with a cooking appliance near the primary means of exit are required to have a secondary means of exit, which is through the forward hatch seen here. ABYC standards require that the hatch be at least 14 and a half inches in diameter. That means a 14 and a half inch circle must be able to be inscribed within the confines of the hatch opening, and the hatch must have an open area of at least 270 square inches. The hatch needs to be operable from both inside and outside of the compartment and open at least 90 degrees. In the hatch shown here, buttons on the exterior can be compressed and the latch is turned to be able to open the hatch. Perhaps the most important tests are conducted not by NMMA inspectors, but by the boat builders themselves. For example, seats of certified boats must withstand substantial testing, including having a 400 pound weight dropped on the seat itself from a height of nine inches, then supporting that weight for five minutes. The seats also have the seat back pulled backwards with a force of 150 pound-feet and then 253 pound-feet. Without failure, NMMA's inspectors review the builder's documentations for these tests and approve it. Boats with fixed firefighting systems shall have a remote control at the helm to activate the fire suppression system. All this is just the beginning since each boat with NMMA certification has to pass a 26-page checklist of more than 300 items. Today, over 190 builders from all over the world have NMMA certification. Does yours? For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve, and I'll see you on the water.